Hello everyone and welcome back to Azam Shar Weekly. We're going to continue working on our stored application. And in this video, we're going to take a look at that how we can replace the stored HTTP client from creating these very particular kind of functions like get categories or get products by categories and replacing them with a more of a generic kind of a network layer that will allow us to simply pass in the resource that we are looking for and it will be able to give us a result, okay? So the first thing we need to define is the resource itself. Now I can go ahead and create our resource struct over here. You can create it in a different file, that's perfectly fine too. So let's go ahead and create a resource struct. So resource basically will represent the type of resource that you're looking for. So sometime it will be categories, sometime it will be products and so on. So this means that I can't really say that the resource will be category because it will be a generic type which will conform to the codable protocol. Each resource that we're looking for will have a URL. So we need to pass in the URL. Each resource can have some sort of headers. Now I can go ahead and hard code these headers if you want. So I can go ahead and say string, string, and some of the headers I can just hard code because I know that we are working with JSON. So one of the headers that we can actually hard code in this case will be JSON. Content type, JSON. We will also have a method and I will call it HTTP method and I will initialize this with empty array. But there is no such thing as HTTP method. So let's go ahead and create that. HTTP method will be simply a string, uh, enum, and it will have a couple of different cases. It will have get, and in the get, you can pass in the query item. We will also have post, which you can pass in the data. And eventually, we will have delete, which we will cover later on. Okay. The other thing that we need to do is we will go ahead and create a name property. And this is simply going to return the name of the HTTP method. So it will be get, post, or delete. So let's go ahead and do that. In the case of get, we will simply go ahead and return get. In the case of post, we will go ahead and return post. And in the case of delete, we will return you delete. Okay, great. So now we have the resource, that's great. And now we can move on to our stored HTTP client class and start creating more of a generic function. And that particular generic function is going to replace our get categories and get products by category. So we will not really need two or three different functions. We will only need one function and more of a generic function, which we can say load. Load a particular resource. And since the resource is of type T, meaning a generic type conforming to Codable, we can simply pass in the T. Resource, which will be of type resource. And it's going to return you some type whatever type that you're asking for, okay? Okay, so now we will go ahead and first of all, create our request. This means using the URL request, we get the URL from the resource, we get the headers from the resource, we get the name from the resource.method.name. So this will give us all the stuff that we need for the resource. Now I can go ahead and perform the resource.method which is a switch. If it is a get request, which right now that's what we are doing anyways, we will get all the query items, but we're not really passing any query items anyways, but if we were, we will get that. Now using the query items, we can use the URL components to use those query items. Now, in this particular example, or in our complete application that we're building, we will probably not have any query items. So we will not really have any URL that is going to take a query string, but if we were, we can use this approach. So this is going to satisfy something like that. And I'm just gonna comment it out over here, HTTPS, 
uh, let's say plat C, whatever, whatever with that we're doing dot com slash products and query items will be something like this sort order or sort equal to ascending ascending asc and uh, we can say sort and i think that's pretty much it like limit we can say limit uh, equals to let's say 10. so in this case the query items will be sort and limit but again we're not really using that anyways so that's fine with us. Next up, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and create the URL. We're gonna get the URL, and now we can go ahead and get the request. All right. So in this case, we can actually go ahead and create this request. So we are gonna go ahead and create the request. Request URL equals to the new URL. All right. And for case for the post, I mean, right now we're not really doing anything with the post. We so we will simply go ahead and say break, and we can also say default for break, which is going to satisfy the conditions, uh, which in our case will be the put, I guess, or well, in in our case it will be delete, right? Okay. So what else is going on? We haven't really returned anything over here. You can see that. And we haven't really done anything with the data. So I can just go ahead and kind of like comment it out over here or just pass nothing in there. So after we go through this switch, next up, we will create the configuration. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the configuration. There we go. All right. And we can actually add default headers to the configuration. So this is another way that you can add default headers, HTTP additional headers. Um, so this will be added to all the different requests, which also means that you don't really have to provide any extra headers over here if you don't want to. Okay. So instead of providing the default over here, I guess we can simply go ahead and say we don't really have anything over here for you. No defaults. So we have the configuration, HTTP defaults. The next step, we're going to go ahead and create the session using the configuration. There we go. And then it will be kind of like the same exact thing that we were doing before. So we will use the session.data. We will get the stuff. If there's a problem, then we're going to say invalid response. And now we can say JSON decoder dot decode to the type that you're sending, which is the generic type, confirming to codable and just try to decode the data. And this is going to give us the result, okay? Once we have the result, well, if there's a problem with the result, then we have to throw an error. We can say network error dot decoding error, or else we can simply go ahead and return you the result. So this is how we will create more of a generic load function in our store HTTP client, which is going to allow us to basically perform network actions. Let's go ahead and see if it works, if it works or not. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the category list screen. Inside the category list screen, you can see right there, we are calling store.fetch categories. Okay, so that is perfectly fine. So let's go to the store categories. There we go. We have fetch categories over here. And you can see that in both the different places, we're getting the fetch categories and fetch products by category. So we're using their corresponding function like get categories, get products by category, and so on. What if we want to use our own function, like the new function that we have just written, which is a load function? How would we do that? So try await client dot, and now you can see the load function over here. We can call the load function pass in the resource. So let's go ahead and create the resource. You can see that we have to pass in the resource, which takes in the URL, headers, and method. Headers will be empty, but the configuration is going to add some default headers, so that's fine. Method by default, I believe it is get, but we can double check it. Let's go back over here. And you can see that by default, it is already get, so that's fine. So we don't really need to provide anything apart from the URL. So resource and now the URL. So URL dot all categories. 
right? This is going to return something, and that is something we can put over here on the categories. And let's comment this one out. That's the old one. Okay. So now if we run this, hopefully we'll be able to see the same exact result. That hopefully is not going to change. Let's go ahead and refresh that. Okay, so everything works as expected. We can definitely see all of our categories. We can also go back to the model again, and we can now start removing these things. There we go. Let's go ahead and fix the fetch products by category. Same exact way. Client dot get products by category. We have to pass in the URL. Again, it's a get request, so that's the only thing we need. We're going to pass in the resource which will be URL dot products by category. And now we can pass in the category ID. This is going to return us something and we will assign it to products. There we go. And hopefully that's it. Oops, that's failing right now. So let's go ahead and see what's going on. Okay it is not able to infer the type. So let's go ahead and see how we can actually fix that problem. All right, so the problem that we're having is obviously we're not calling the load function. There we go. And hopefully that will fix the problem. Let's go ahead and write it again. Sometimes it just helps to write it again. Resource with the URL, URL dot products by category ID, and we can pass in the category ID, and that should fix it. Great. Let's go back to our category list screen. And we are going to see if we are able to load the products also. And you can see that we are able to load the products. So this is great because we are able to go to our store HTTP client. And instead of creating these separate functions like get categories or get products by category, Instead of using that, we created a little bit more generic function like the load function, which is going to be used throughout. Now, if you want to even separate out the load function so that it can do other stuff or it can do a little bit less stuff, you can actually do that. That's perfectly fine. But right now it's working out for us. So we can start removing these things. We can completely remove this function because everything is now being replaced to use the load function, which is a little bit more generic as compared to the last function. Okay, great. So that is pretty much it for this video. We learn about creating a little bit more generic networking layer that is going to return you a JSON result. It's going to get the JSON, it's gonna decode the JSON to a particular model and then return it to you, okay? so. A little bit more nice and a little bit more, I guess, uh, you know, less code that we have to type in the future. Right now, we did have to type a bunch of code, but for the future, it's going to protect us from creating uh, a new function for uh, adding or posting and deleting. We can just use the load function with the correct resource and it should just work. All right. So that's it for today or that's it for this video. And we are going to come back again and we're going to continue working on our application.